Hey, what's going on, y'all? It's your girl, Miss Free. You here? Take my glasses off. So, um, as you may have heard by now, um, and the story's still progressing as we get more information, there was a mass shooting in Florida today. On Valentine's Day, 19-year-old Nicholas Cruz started shooting from outside. The fire alarm was pulled. Teachers and students thought it was a regular drill. They came outside, prepared to do what they normally do when a drill happens, and they were met with gunfire, starting from outside of the school, leading to inside of the school. From what I understand, and this, don't quote me on this part, from what I understand, the student was kicked out of the school for whatever reason. <clears throat> And again, as I said, the story is still developing. So some pieces of the information I have and then some pieces of the information I don't have. But what I'm going to do is talk to you guys about what I do know and give you my opinion on the situation. So basically, um, the shooting started from outside and then the gunfire erupted and continued inside. And bodies, unfortunately, just started to drop. Children didn't suspect it coming. Teachers didn't see it coming. But it happened. And, oh my God, it's just horrific as a parent. Hearing about something like this happening on the news. And then getting to the school, hoping and praying that your child comes out. Because you sent your school, your child to school this morning with the intent of them being safe, of them getting their education, of them having a normal day. Of course, we can't predict what the day is going to bring. But I think we should be able to notice the warning signs, and I'm sure there were many, especially if the fact that if it's true that this child was kicked out of the school. So what can we do to prevent this from happening in the future? First of all, first of all, I feel like the first step would be that our tax dollars should be invested in is getting metal detectors in the school, even though it started from outside the school. I think that would be the first step to have metal detectors in every school, good or bad. Metal detectors in every school. So that that'll be the first course of action in preventing from students coming in with any kind of weapons, any kind of drug paraphernalia, any of that. If you would like to smoke whatever you do, you do that outside of school on your time. It should not be coming into the school and influencing other, other kids. Now, that's neither here nor there with the situation, but that's just where I come from as a parent. It needs to be stopped, okay? We need to have metal detectors in the schools, number one. Number two, there are reports that the young man had bragged about liking guns, having guns, and being in the possession of one to another student. And the student had told the news reporters about that when he was outside after everything had went down. So with that being said, <clears throat> I feel like when there's a situation where a student is showing that they are unbalanced or imbalanced in any way mentally, if they're talking about guns, talking about killing people, doing this, any kind of signs of mental illness or signs of recklessness or signs where the person could possibly take a life, this should be mandatory psych evals, mandatory psych evaluations. I think that will also be a next step in preventing murders and innocent people getting hurt and or killed. Okay? What can we do as parents? My next thing I think we should do, honestly, at this point... If you are familiar with my channel, you're probably aware of my personal situation. The videos that I've posted, the previous videos that I've posted, I want to say. So this is my fourth video um, in the last maybe five days. But I did a live last night and I did a live about less than a week ago about my daughter's situation. So please look at that and you'll understand where I'm coming from as a parent and why I'm so passionate about this situation. And how I can only imagine how the parents that lost their child or their child is clinging on fighting for their life in a hospital, how they must feel and how this can be prevented and how society has numerous times on numerous occasions, especially today, fell, I feel like fell those children. And in my case, fell my child. But I'm not going to make this video about me. Again, if you want to see what I'm referring to, please go back and look at those videos and you'll understand exactly why I'm so passionate. However, the next course of action, I'm going to say this, 
Now, not everybody is not in a position to homeschool their kids. Some of us, like myself, are single parents. Some of us don't have the support system to be able to watch the kids. And, you know, because I do feel like children need that adult supervision. Definitely, depending on the age of the child. Because not every child is mature enough to stay at home while we go out and work and then come home and try to school them. So, when I say this, I'm saying to those that have either the means to do it and or those that are able to do it. Where you can be home. If you're home more than 80% of the time, you have a high school. In most states, you're required to have a high school diploma at least. You have a high school diploma, homeschool your child. And I know someone might, people might disagree with that because we do want our children to have the interaction with other people. You know, it gives them, you know, honestly, the food for life, the things that they need to be able to interact with other people, to have those, build those communication skills, to have the high school experiences that we all had as children. But times are changing. And at the end of the day, I feel like, at the end of the day, I feel like we got to do what we got to do as parents to keep our kids safe because we can't depend on the government we can't depend on the schools to do it we have to do it we want to depend on them to do it we should be able to depend on them to do it because that's why our tax dollars are going but we can't guarantee that they can and we definitely can't guarantee that they will and it's not to say that they don't have good intentions but at the end of the day we have to do what we have to do to prevent our children from being hurt okay and that's in every way shape and form again there needs to be psych evaluations on students they need, if, okay, they are showing signs of uncertainty, if they are showing signs where they can harm either themselves or someone else. You know, I, it, it's so many things that can prevent situations. And I just feel like if we really sit down and we really tackle things head on and are not afraid to discuss things like, you know, you just, you know what, too? Paying attention to your kids. Because at the end of the day, the young man who did this today, Mr. Nicholas Cruz, he's somebody child too. And I'm sure he showed also some signs if his parents, I don't know what the situation is with, again, the story is still developing. But I'm sure he showed, if he showed signs at school, I'm sure he showed signs at home. People pay attention to your children. When they are acting out, when they are being disrespectful, when they are being unruly, when they are not allowing you to be a part of their life, you have to take the step and demand it. Like I tell my kids, ain't no locked doors in my house. You open the goddamn door. I'm going through your room. I'm checking drawers. I'm checking this. I'm checking that. Because that's my right as a parent and my responsibility to be involved in your life. Because I am responsible for you. So... Pay attention to your kids. Pay attention to the warning signs, okay? Teachers, I'm going to hold y'all a little bit responsible as well. Not for this situation, but as your duty as a teacher. If you see something that's not right in your class, okay? Document it. Notify the parent. If you have to have a meeting with your boss, the principal, I don't care how far it has to go. Make it known. Because, like today, so many people lost their life. And I feel like <sighs> so much more can be done. We have to arm ourselves with the necessary tools to not only protect ourselves, but protect our children. So, uh, my condolences go out. My heartfelt condolences go out to the parents who had to lose their children today or they're clinging in the hospital for their life or even the ones who their children came out safe and they had that, that feeling you get in your stomach wondering if their baby was going to come out of school today. But thank God they did. But for the parents who do not, who did not get that opportunity to hold their child one more time, to know that their child was going to be okay, to find out the inevitable. My condolences go out to you. My heartfelt condolences go out to you. My prayers are with you as well. Teachers who maybe didn't make it. Teachers who had to watch their colleagues and their fellow students and faculty 
gunned down or hear that they didn't make it out. These children are going to need counseling. The teachers are going to need counseling. But we, we got to do better as people. And we got to protect our children. I am advocating for my daughter and her situation again. And I'm also looking at homeschooling my child. I really am. Honestly, I'm looking at homeschooling really and truly at this point. Either all of my children or at least my younger two. Because which what can you do? But we need to make metal detectors a big, big thing to happen in the schools. I know there are resource officers in the school on site in Florida and definitely in Georgia. We need to have resource officers in the school and we need to have resource officers outside of the school. Of course, they're going to say, oh, well, that's not in the budget, blah, 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 blah. But in Florida, there are principals, and I know one in particular, that's making $90,000 a year. So that's our tax money at work. Put it to good use. Keep these children safe. Pay attention to the warning signs. And let's band together, parents, and, and, and fight for these children as much as we need to. Fight the good fight. I'm going to conclude my video. And you guys, again, just, I, I just can't, like, another mass shooting in America. In less than six months. The last one we had was at the church. Pay attention, people. Anything that doesn't look right, we got to pay more attention. We got to pay more attention. Pay attention. And I'm going to say this last bit, too. There are people out here who like to criticize people and make fun of people and taunt people. There are adults who bully too. Mm-hmm. Let's put that to an end. You never know what a person is going through. You never know a person's mental state and where they are to being on that last little edge to where they're going to decide to take a life. I just, I'm speechless about the whole situation. I'm speechless about a whole lot of things that's going on, honestly, in the world today. In our government, in our schools, in our community. I just feel like we're, I, I feel like really and truly it's like you're not safe nowhere. You're not safe anywhere. Well, all we can do is be aware and take as much action as we can while we can. I'm going to conclude this video. You guys have a good night.